Hey guys, what is up? Mage here, doing another Battlefield 1 gameplay commentary. Hey guys, I wanted to talk about something I see as a common issue, uh, a common theme that I usually see on the Battlefield 1 subreddit, and I see it constantly... Um, well, I wouldn't say constantly, but I do see it get suggested uh, in the Battlefield 1 um, CTE subreddit every once in a while, and, I, and, and that is random bullet deviation. It is an issue. Um, I see a lot of people go on about it in the comment sections of uh, Battlefield 1 videos for popular YouTubers, and I think what it is, when, when you're talking about random bullet deviation, um, is I would argue not the entire player population, but a certain segment of the player population is just, they don't know how to tackle this. They don't know how to deal with it, they don't know how to remedy um, my RNG as I see some people go on about it, which is amusing to me because I'm coming from World of Tanks, and when I hear people go on about RNG in Battlefield 1, I find it amusing beyond imagination because the people that are complaining about RNG in this game know nothing about RNG. Anybody that's played World of Tanks gets a good laugh out of anyone that complains about RNG in this game. Um, but the way to deal with... Um, with random bullet deviation and to deal with um, to deal with it not being as big of a factor, which I would argue is a bigger um, I, I would argue it shows more skill to know how to limit the uh, effects of RNG in this game or random bullet deviation um, than uh, than to mindlessly tap fire and microburst like in prior Battlefield titles, which that's what I think it is. People are used to the older Battlefield games and how the shooting mechanics work. Um, you, you can't just mindlessly tap fire and microburst. And for this video, we'll, we'll refer to submachine guns mostly. Um, but you, you can't do that with automatic weapons, submachine guns in this game. It's just not happening. I see constantly players will go on about weapons like the MP18 and will say it's an inaccurate weapon. Well, well, it's an inaccurate weapon when you compare it to SLRs because SLRs are designed to be used out to medium range. The MP18 is... How do I put this? It is a good all-rounder of a submachine gun. I know a lot of people like to prefer the Hell Regal, but the MP18, I would argue, is really just underrated in that regard, but that's for another video. The, um, the MP18's great strength is... It can offer the assault class an ability to engage targets at a variety of ranges that it normally couldn't and do it accurately. Um, it basically can offer you SLR-esque kind of performance um, while not being as good as an actual SLR at medium range. Um, my point is, is if you go up against a good SLR user and you are a good MP18 user, chances are that SLR user is going to hand your ass back to you on a platter simply because this gun is just not as good. And typically a good SLR user uh, going in, into close quarters engagements against a good SMG user using something like, say, an Automatico or the Hell Regal, um, or even the MP18 could hand an SLR user their ass back to them on a platter. Um, and I think that's part of the equation. Players do not understand... They're, they're taking weapons like the MP18 and they're trying to put them into the extremes, if you will. They're, they're trying to engage players with, um, with Model 8 uh, factories, or they're trying to engage 1907 users at medium range, when in fact, that's where those weapons are at their best, at medium range engagements. An MP18 is actually at its best inside of 25 meters. And constantly you will see players go on about the Automatico, and that's one of the best examples. Players go on about why would you want an inaccurate weapon? Why would you, why would you not go for the more accurate option? Well, the MP18 is the more accurate option, but um, you'll see players gravitate toward the Automatico and the Hell Regal simply because they work inside of the ranges that assault players are playing at, mostly. Now. Like I said, I argue the MP18 is vastly underrated in this regard. It holds its own just fine. And it has a completely different role in mind as being the all-purpose, I guess you could say, all-rounder of the class. Um, for whatever reason or another, people insist that the Hell Regal is the true all-rounder, but 
the MP18 is quite effective. Um, that's for another video. Um, I would argue also some of it is, um, and you know, I know I'm stating the obvious. It's with, with random bullet deviation. It is to it's to keep you from tap firing everything across the map. In Battlefield 4, uh, and even Battlefield 3 is an even better example, pretty much high rate of fire weapons dominated simply because you tap fired and micro bursted everything to death, and thus high rate of fire weapons dominated. Low rate of fire weapons were an afterthought. Nobody even bothered using them unless shits and giggles. That's that's the only reason you use them. Otherwise, it was Battlefield, AEK, or ACWR, or M16. Um, those were the only weapons worth using. Everything else was uh, for lulls. That's all they were there for. Here in Battlefield 1, every weapon is truly viable. Every weapon has its use. Um, you can take weapons like the Bene C and actually engage people and have really effective engagements against players. Um, you can absolutely dominate people with that weapon as long as you use it in the ranges it's designed for. And that's what I find uh, to be frustrating is you have that segment of the player base that doesn't understand that. Um, the way you played Battlefield 4 is not going to work here in Battlefield 1. You have to play within your weapons lane. You have to stay in your lane. Um, you can see here in this video, I I'm intentionally staying inside of this area because this is where a lot of the close quarters engagements are at, but I also know I'm going to see some long sight lines. And this is where an MP18 is useful. It, it gives the assault player some level of accuracy down a hallway, basically. Is and and that that's pretty much what you're looking for as an assault player. You want to get into room clearing, uh, relative close quarters engagements. If I was playing a medic, I'm probably not going to be too interested in doing what uh, my fellow squad mate here is doing. I'm not going to be as interested being inside of this torn down blimp. I'm going to do what he just did. I'd probably be fighting along the outside of the map more often, or outside of the C and D flag, simply because that's where I'm going to see the most longer sight lines, and that's where SLRs are at their best. Um, you also don't see enough creativity from usually these people that are complaining. You don't see them trying to take use of cover. You don't, you don't see them attempting these things. And I bring that up because the use of cover, the ability to get inside of your weapon's ideal range... That's a bigger measuring stick, I would argue, in terms of skill than the old system, which we had in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3, which was nothing but tap firing and micro bursting. Here in Battlefield 1, it's not as simple of it's not as simple of a thing as I see this guy and now I'm gonna tap fire him. I actually have to sit there and say, I'm not inside of the range I need to be. I need to close the distance first before I even tap fire this guy. And then I got to get in close, and of course, you know, tap fires out the door here. So I'm actually trying to figure out a way to get close enough where I can burst this guy properly to death and kill him in a reasonable amount of time, so he doesn't have enough time to engage me or to react to kill me. Um, and you'll see that happen quite often, where where players will take an MP18 or an Automatico, and they will just be way too ambitious, and they will engage a medic player out to 30 to 35 meters and even if they do a serious amount of damage often what you'll see is a combination of things um, you'll see random bullet deviation play a role because that person is not playing inside of 25 meters really well inside of 20 meters if you're talking about something like the automatico um, and that's when random bullet deviation becomes a factor and of course that's not even mentioning if they're bursting the weapon properly or not um, and then your bullets go wide they start missing their mark and that's when you'll see medic players usually get a good laugh and just in that person they'll just put shot after shot into them and kill them um, players are, are not using they're not using cover they're not understanding the strengths of their weapon is what it is and I think it's going to take time for players to figure that out. Um, I know some would say, well, the game's been out for six months. How the fucking, how fucking long does it take someone to figure it out? Uh, well, it can take some time. If you go back to the Battlefield 4 subreddit after the spring patch, you've seen a lot of people complain and were just 
completely bamboozled by um, the attachment nerves, uh, what attachments to run on their weapon, how they worked on their weapon, um, why their AEK wasn't being as effective as it normally was at longer distances. Um, it, it took people, I, I would argue, roughly seven to eight months to figure that out. And some of that you could chalk up to players coming back for the first time and trying the game out just to see what all changed. But that, I would argue, is part of it. People are figuring shit out. And it takes time. Um, case in point, you still see people running around with sub-slaughter 1916s and trying to use them in close quarters against people with shotguns and automaticas. It just isn't happening. Because anybody that knows anything about that gun will tell you it just doesn't have the damage per second to be that effective. But I, I'm, I don't know. I guess I'm an eternal optimist. I, I always believe the best in people. People can figure shit out eventually. Um, in short... Basically, players need to start using some common sense. You know, don't take a submachine gun like an MP18. Yes, it is It is the long-range option for the assault class in terms of SMGs. It is the, um, the more accurate option for the SMGs, but it has its fucking limits. Don't expect to fuck somebody up at 40 to 45 meters and seriously drop them. It's just not going to happen. You'll get a few outliers where that happens, but... Chances are you're not going to drop them. Now you start talking, you know, maybe 20, well, 25, 30 meters. It's doable. It's quite doable, and that's more inside of the range of that weapon. Um, and you, you'll also see people, you know, I mean, it's kind of like shotguns. You you don't take that weapon inside of, you, you don't take that weapon at 30 meters and expect to hit fire and drop people with buckshot. It's not happening. You got to get them inside of 15 meters where you can reliably one-shot them, and that's where those weapons are at their best. And players, I think, are just having a tough time grasping the roles of certain weapons, so on and so forth. In short, just use some fucking common sense and understand the weapon you're using. All right, guys. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.